This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Healthcare is a hot topic, and these days seemingly more complicated than ever. In such a high-tech, high-stress, high-demand environment, many are looking now, though, to a more holistic approach, taking care of our mind, body, and spirit. But how do we do that? Conventional healthcare, complementary, alternative modalities, Western or Eastern medicine. So many terms and opinions, it can be hard to know where to land. On this latest edition of In Studio, we'll break it all down for you on our show, Integrative Health. In Studio begins right now. There is no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to a person's health. Sure, some things are good for everyone. Eating a wide range of clean fruits and vegetables, not smoking, wearing a seat belt and minimizing sun exposure are all beneficial to everyone's health. So there are some givens in the world of health and medicine. But what about all the options there are for coping with an illness or disease or chronic pain? Or what if you're pretty healthy and are just trying to maintain optimal quality of life? Many people do want to live longer and more vibrant lives. That's where integrative health comes in very handy. It's definitely worth exploring and knowing some of the facts. So our guests throughout this next hour are all highly skilled integrative health care experts with thriving practices here in Northwest Florida. We'll be discussing many different integrative modalities, including acupuncture, herbal medicines, chiropractic, energy, and massage therapies with Bonnie McLean, Kenneth Williams, and Blakely Parent. First up, Bonnie McLean. Bonnie has over 50 years of experience in the healing arts. She first earned a nursing degree in 1967 from Duke University and practiced nursing for over 20 years. In 1978, Bonnie attended Pepperdine University where she received her master's degree in counseling and psychology. She received additional degrees, certifications, and licensing, including a doctorate in Oriental Medicine in 1986. She's practiced acupuncture for 33 years and is certified nationally in acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. She serves full-time now at Bay Bridge in Gulf Breeze. Welcome, Bonnie McLean. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Really glad. I'm glad that you are here and that we can help maybe take some mm -hmm. of the mystery out of some of the different things. And also, it, it's very confusing to so many people. I agree. You've been in this since before it was cool, right? I, that's yes. what I used to say <laughs> when I had a business. We did green things before green was mm -hmm. all the rage. But I think that just shows that it's solid because now everybody's coming on board. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I'm thrilled. Thrilled. I mean, I felt so alone for a long, long time. And I was, I mean, I love Western medicine. I would, you know, spent 20 years. My dad was a doctor. He was one of the original doctors at Baptist in Pensacola. And uh, so I grew up with, you know, Western medicine. And I loved it, loved nursing for 20 years. And I just started burning out. And so um, I started, you know, finding other ways that I could work with people on you know an individual basis was you know looked after counseling and thought I'd go into that and ended up doing acupuncture and oriental medicine so way back I was out in California in the 1970s and had some health issues myself and started going to these holistic health conferences down in San Diego and I remember walking in the door and 2,000 other health professionals were in there. And I was so thrilled, you know, that there were so many other health professionals back in the 1970s. And, but, you know, it just seemed like I just still walked kind of like a, you know, when I went, you know, went into acupuncture and I was working in uh, some hospitals out in California and I still just felt, you know, pretty alone. So now I don't. You know, now I'm really seeing everything blossom. We're all working together a lot more. I'm seeing more and more integrative medicine clinics and hospitals opening up all over the country. And we're certainly practicing it here in Pensacola. 
Well, um, let's talk about that a little bit because we've talked, you and I have mm -hmm. talked about how there is definitely a wonderful, amazing place for Western, and then mm -hmm. you you find the Eastern as well. How how what are your thoughts on that? I think Western medicine's wonderful when it comes to life threatening situations, for acute care, for trauma, you know, for accidents, if people need surgeries. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. When it comes to chronic disease, I really think that we need to work with patients to be their own healer because that's really, I think, how we have to deal with chronic disease. People have to work on their lifestyle and we have to heal from the inside out. It's not a fix me kind of thing. It's a process and I think it needs a lot of education um, and a lot of motivation and a lot of uh, working together but I, I really think that we are our own healers. And so, you know, like in, in China, they have a combination in their hospitals even. They have a Western wing that has the surgeries, the medicines, you know, the procedures, the diagnostic tools. And then they have a Chinese medicine wing where they have the acupuncture, the massage, the qigong, the Chinese herbs. And so when people have an acute problem, they go into the Western wing. But if they have a preventive medicine or a chronic problem or after they've healed from the acute problem they need to you know really rejuvenate themselves and everything then they go you know into the Chinese medicine wing and I would really like to see a lot more of that you know being practiced in this country I really think we need to be working together when you talk about what China's doing, is that something new or does it go back many, many, many centuries? Um, well, it doesn't go back centuries, but it started probably back in the 1930s and 40s. They started bringing Western medicine in. So they have been integrating the two medicines since then. Okay, but now Eastern medicine has been around That's for 5,000 years 5, old. 5,000. Yes, and actually the original uh, Taoist, mm -hmm. <laughs> the original sages in Chinese medicine, they, they were like the holistic physicians because they worked on the level of body, mind, and spirit. They worked with the family, the community, and the individual. So they really, to me, were the original holistic practitioners. So many people, as we said, want a one-size-fix-all or they want to walk into a doctor and say, fix mm -hmm. me, doctor, and then when that doesn't happen, they're floundering a little bit. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that person who um, is, is in that mode right now? Because there is no little pill. No, there's not. We're so used to instant everything. You know, we, we do a drive-through through McDonald's or whatever, you know, and we're used to getting that instant meal or you know, a, a drinking Red Bull or something and, you know, getting that instant, you know, up. But we pay the price for it over time. And it does, you know, affect our health over a period of time. I think that we are our own healers. I think that we heal ourselves. Our bodies are self-healing mechanisms. We cut ourselves and maybe we wash it off and make sure it doesn't get infected, maybe put antibiotic ointment on it. But when we're sleeping, our body is still healing. And it does that with everything. But I think we're so busy with our daily lives, we don't, we're not even aware of that anymore. We need to respect our own bodies and, you know, their ability to do these things and support them. And as you said, you know, with your, um, you know, clean living intro, that's what we all need to be doing. And it's easy to reach for the quick fix, but in the long run, it really does us in. So many people just think they don't have time for it, but really they don't not have time for exactly. it. Exactly. Um, talking about acupuncture mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm. um, I've had a number of sessions. I've enjoyed a session with you, and I've, I've seen many mm -hmm. healers around the country with that, and I have found it to be very beneficial to some of my own aches and pains mm -hmm. and different issues going on. Um, tell me specifically how it works. I have a pretty good idea of it, and I made sure that I had some idea before or I just went and had that done, but let's take some mystery out of it. Let's do, yes, because it does sound very exotic, you know, when we talk about the yin and the yang and the energy flows in the body. And we do have a Chinese medicine way of explaining it, which does have to do with energy. Uh, but, you know, when you think about it, I mean, Einstein had it down, E equals MC squared. Energy affects matter, matter affects energy, and they are interchangeable. So with acupuncture, we're working on the energy body to affect the physical body. 
And also when we use the Chinese herbs, we're working with the physical body that also affects the energy body. So, you know, in Chinese medicine, we have meridians, we have flows of energy like rivers of energy throughout our bodies, and they feed all of the cells. But if there's a blockage in that energy um, river, uh, you know, like a dam is on it, then we don't have enough energy at one end, we have too much energy in the other, and so that's what causes pain. So like in their idea, like if we had blockages between the body and the head, we might get headaches. Too much energy here, not enough in the rest of the body. Or if we have a chronic illness, we might have a depleted energy in a certain organ. So we want to, you know, reestablish the homeostasis of the body. In Western medicine, we're working on the neurotransmitters of the brain, we're working on the endocrine system, we're working on the fascia of the body, the trigger points, we're bringing in more oxygen nutrients through the circulation. And how do the needles that you use, and when we say needles, let's be honest, they're <laughs> little teeny wires, right? My little pins. <laughs> it scares yeah. people, though. How does, it does. How does it work, and, and what would a session be like? Okay, well, I use Japanese, the Japanese form of acupuncture, which is very thin, fine, hair-like needles. And there are different sizes of needles depending on the form of acupuncture that somebody's using. I, I can fit five of my needles into a hypodermic needle. Wow. <laughs> That's it. So um, I think the way it works is the body thinks it's a foreign invader and it's a little piece of metal, and the body goes, oh my gosh, there's something there, I need to take care of it. And so it sends all these healing mechanisms into that area, and it brings in the blood supply, like I said, the white blood cells, the oxygen, the nutrients, the red blood cells, all the healing mechanisms. And um, what kind of patients do you usually see, and are they getting relief? What kind of um, ailments do they come in for? Uh, for me, now, we can, we can treat a lot of different things because we're not treating the illness, we're treating the body, we're treating the individual, and as I said, each person heals themselves. So uh, WHO says that it has a whole list of things that we can work with. But the main things that I work with, I love working with the psycho-emotional issues, with stress-related, PTSD even, um, depression, anxiety, insomnia, that kind of thing or acute and chronic pain. Those are probably most of my patients. I do work with allergies. I do work with women's issues, uh, menopause, um, PMS, uh, fertility, those kinds of things. Work with longevity, you know, just people that just want to stay as young as we can. I'm certainly into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, I think, yeah, I mean, and I do have, a, you know, some other patients that come in with different ailments, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. Um, so not everything you do involves needles. Some of it's herbals, uh, Chinese, True. and some mm -hmm. of it may be counseling. Yes. Um, now, I don't have a license as a counselor, mm -hmm. but I incorporate the counseling skills that Into. I have. Mm -hmm. I do have a certification in hypnosis and guided imagery. So I use those modalities too. I use Chinese herbs. If somebody just wants that, they come in for a consultation. I do see some children, but I usually teach the parents how they can do the acupressure on the children. That's good information to mm -hmm. have. Um, and we talked about, and we'll get back to this in a little bit, but more and more of even the, the hospitals in our area are looking into uh, integrative health. Are you feeling good about that? I am. I'm really seeing a lot of progress. I've been back in Pensacola 18 years now, and I've seen a lot of real positive change. I know... I think that they're still using acupuncture out at Andrews. I know they were for a while because I knew the doctor that was doing it. I know they're doing it at uh, the Naval Air Station and the Naval Hospital. They have a pain unit where they're actually doing acupuncture there. Um, I'm hoping to see it come into you know, our hospitals more and more, but I, I know that they do have some programs that are very integrative. Some of the birthing centers are very progressive. That's wonderful information, and we'll talk some more about okay. that when we bring our other guests in this evening. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. Very, very interesting. Thank you, Sherry. Well, when we return, we'll continue our discussion of integrative health with Dr. Kenneth Williams. You're watching In Studio on WSRE. We'll be back in a moment.
American graduate is proud to recognize a champion for education. Autism Pensacola is a support group for those living with autism, and we seek to improve life for those living with autism. They have given us an opportunity to be part of our son's education, to be part of his playtime. They care about inclusion and acceptance. And our goal, of course, is to increase children's independence and help them be successful in school. We want teachers who are equipped to meet the needs of children with autism in the schools. WSRE has been a great partner with Autism Pensacola, providing us with PBS resources and helping us further our mission. We know that working together as a community, we can improve life for all of those living with autism and have great outcomes. We get to see these kids make such great gains um, in communication and in social skills. So it's so important for families of autism to have this wealth of information as, long, as well as support. And it's so meaningful when um, a parent comes to you and says, you know, this is just what I needed for my son. It's made such a difference in my child's life. The more we do for them as children, the more positive their outcomes will be as adults. Autism Pensacola, helping children and families connect the pieces. For more stories of champions, visit americangraduate.org. Welcome back. We're talking about integrative health, and our next guest, Dr. Kenneth Williams, has been involved in the healthcare field for more than 35 years. He's a nationally approved continuing education provider for social workers, massage therapists, and acupuncturists. He currently maintains a full time chiropractic office at Bay Bridge in Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he provides a wide variety of both conventional and complementary medical procedures. When not doing that, he has an active teaching schedule throughout the Southeast. Welcome, Dr. Williams. Oh, thank you. So glad you could join us today. Now, you're busy, so I appreciate you taking the time to come here, and everybody's busy, I know, but that's why it's good to stop and... Take a break. Take a break. Yes. And tell people what you're doing and some of the new uh, technology that's out there involved in your field. Uh, well... In my field, actually in the healthcare field, it's very, very exciting because we're now beginning to use light waves in the form of lasers to actually stimulate the body's own ability to heal. Uh, so we're now affecting the body's ability to heal faster and better without putting all the drugs into the system. So it's really, really a great thing. How does it do that? When you say a laser, does it go in there and, and, and I, did you say, use the word it disrupts things a little bit, well, makes it reheal, or how does that work? Actually, what it does is, um, and actually it's a class four laser. There's been class three, three B, but now there's class four, and they, will pen they can penetrate up to five centimeters deep, which is all the way to the bone. And what it does is it stimulates the mitochondria of the cells, and the mitochondria, which is the brain of the cell, evaluates what's happening on a cellular level and the cell would begin to either break down scar tissue, start kicking in ATP, start doing certain things to repair the cell, and each cell gets stimulated, and as a, as a group, say if it's the cells make up a muscle, the muscle begins to function correctly. And is that what we have a picture of? You sent us uh, something, and it looked like there was a, a light shining yes, on, on yes. somebody's arm or yeah. something? Because when I think of chiropractic or what you do, I'm thinking of a back. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm using a laser on somebody that's got like tennis elbow. Uh, a lot of people just think chiropractic is just the spine, but th we also work on TMJ and wrist and carpal tunnel and elbows and knees and all kinds of things. But the laser actually is something that we use a lot. And on this example, I'm actually marking, um, that's one thing I do with my patients. When we do any kind of therapy, whether it's laser or interferentials, which I can talk a little bit about that, the, the thing that we do is I mark that patient so I know that the therapy goes exactly where it needs to go. It's not like you just surround it with something. We, we target very specifically in my practice of what we're treating. We know what we're after when we treat it. I would imagine that um, these modalities have been um, highly tested and oh, yes. before they even ever get where they are. So are you seeing an increase in people that are um, wanting to use fewer and fewer drugs? Uh, absolutely. The, the, one of the biggest changes I've seen in 35 years is actually the change in consciousness of our whole planet and, and the people that come to uh, 
to get some type of health care. Uh, when I first started, chiropractic was looked at as very odd, you know, like kind of outside the system. And actually, medical system, chiropractic system are, were actually two separate systems. And uh, acupuncture, same way, massage therapist, it, it, it didn't have a good reputation when I first started. But what's happened as our culture has grown and our consciousness has grown, I, our consciousness has allowed to integrate Eastern thoughts with Western thoughts, and now we look at everything as a whole and a piece. So now they can all come together and help a patient in a way that they couldn't before. So that's, that's a big change. We have some people that are watching this evening, I'm sure, that have never considered anything outside of their doctor's office. Um, with healthcare the way it is these days, doctors have less and less time with each patient. What, what do you say to what do you say to those patients? Where, where do they start? Where do they look? Um, do they need to be referred? to you or can they pick up a phone book and say, this is something I realize I need, let me look well, around? Uh, I guess it depends on what they're looking for, but uh, I'm actually a primary care physician, so I'm, I'm like a gatekeeper, so they can self-refer into me at any time. The same thing with Dr. Bonnie. And uh, the thing I think is, and especially in my practice, we're very holistic in our approach, the way, and we integrate other practices, but we really focus on pain. I mean, you cannot be happy if you're in pain. It, it's, it's just impossible. And there's an old saying, you can't be cosmic if your big toe hurts. <laughs> so, so it's hard to maintain a certain quality of life. So in my field, it's developed that the quality of life that I help improve or guide people in with my experience is pain. And uh, to me, no matter what it is, if it's acupuncture, massage, shiatsu, uh, steroids, if they need epidurals, whatever they need that is the best thing for that patient to help them improve the quality of life, that's where we go. So I try to help guide them through experience, and it's not just what I do, it could be somebody else's expertise that may be what they need, and I just try to guide them in the way that's best for them. Well, I did come in and see you, and you referred me to someone else to, to, to complement what you were doing, mm -hmm. and um, and I think that it's, it's very important for each patient to do their education. Yes. Um, Talk about some of the different um, things that you have in your office because you even get people doing a little bit of exercise to strengthen muscles well, and that kind of we, thing. We have um, a spinal decompression machine and there's, there's a lot of controversy about which ones are good, but we have really a good one. And we have, of course, the laser. And then we have a thing called spine force, which is a thing that actually can strengthen your body and it does it through your visual field to your brain. So you can use it to actually reprogram muscle memory by using this, it does with uh, balance and eye coordination, and you can't cheat it, you can't make it do what it wants to do. You, your brain has to figure it out and it reprograms your muscles. And so we have the standard PT exercises that you do, but most of it is actually common sense. It's just um, in, in my field, especially where I am, it's a lot of it is mechanics, and a lot of the mechanics cannot be fixed with um, medications. The medications can fix some of the inflammation responses or stimulate immunity uh, strength, but it doesn't correct the mechanical problems. So that's where our traditional medicine is failing. We're so good at if your blood pressure is high, lowering it. If you if you have bladder problems, we control it. We we do this, but we're not getting healthier as a nation, as a people. And part of that is because we haven't quite figured out the subtle balances of how we are as a human, we're more than just a body. So there's many factors, as like Dr. Bonnie said, that incorporate somebody getting restored to, lot, to health. And, and that's what we're trying to do is help guide them in wherever it would be, if it's a counselor, if it's a drug addiction program, if it's medical epidurals, if it's surgery, whatever, that's the way we go. We go what's best for them. And, and um, we see a lot of evidence of, of people um, taking away a lot of good things from that. But when you talk about energy, sometimes somebody will walk into a room and you say, oh, that person has bad energy. Or somebody walks in and they've got good energy. Um, a lot of people, unless they actually see that in writing from a scientist, don't, don't buy that. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Wow, I have too many thoughts <laughs> okay. on that subject. Let's give, let's give a <laughs> nutshell version for tonight's purposes. Well, I guess you'd have to say man is more than just a physical body. He has a body, he has um, 
what they call an etheric body, which is a, uh, a, a energy body called the vital body. It's also called the etheric double. There's been a lot of stuff written on this, but that's the body that the chi flows through. That's the, it's an energetic replica of the physical body. And that's what Dr. Bonnie works on. She works on it of uh, being able to move vital force energy, which is called chi. Uh, and so every culture has a name for this energy. In chiropractic, it's called innate. Uh, I think the Hawaiians call it mana. Uh, in Sanskrit, it's called prana. There's so many different things, but there's a separate force that's recognized as the healing part that's energetic. Then you have the emotional body. People have emotions. People have a mental body. And people actually have a spiritual aspect to them. So there's actually many subtle layers of very fine, subtle energy that as it comes from whatever the source is, that's the most fine, that as it slows down, it becomes physicalized in different planes. So I don't right. know if that makes sense. It, it makes sense to me. Yeah. I think it sounds daunting to so many people. I think there's probably really good reading out there, but I think it probably would resonate uh, with most well, people. Well, see, our, our oldest medicine is Chinese, and they recognize that there's something besides the physical body that made the body and controlled the body. And uh, that they, their purpose is they have five levels in Chinese medicine. So in the Chinese medicine thing, they go through the different levels to affect the different bodies. So when the body is ailing, something is wrong on an energetic level somewhere. Even if it's physical, it's an energetic level because you can take the cells and get an electron microscope and see electrons. So what appears to be physical isn't. And the same thing is true. What seems to be an emotional field actually is energetic as well. Well, and, and that's, um, that's where scientifically people want to know those kinds of things. And so they can be seen. In well, they're, they're finding ways. out now that meditation stimulates, I think it's gamma waves, a, a new wave particle that we did not realize that the brain had. So, so meditation, which is not considered a physical thing, is actually a quality of a certain level of consciousness that you're trying to establish uh, that's not mental or emotional or physical actually stimulates the brain in a, in a way that we can't comprehend yet. So um, I think we have a lot to learn. I think someday we'll look back on this and we'll say, can you believe they didn't know that at yes. the time? Yeah. Just because the, in, in the 1700s they didn't know about electricity, it didn't mean that it didn't exist. <laughs> Right. And so there are certain things now that even though we can't prove it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You know? I saw an article the other day that said uh, prayer changes waves in the brain. Yes. Um, so, I mean, everybody's looking at that and they're trying to prove it, but there are people anecdotally that can tell you those kinds of well, things. I think people get, when you start getting into my field, people start crossing they, into religious boundaries. And, and that's where problems occur. Um, so I think what happens with some people is it bumps into a certain level. So prayer is no different than meditation as far as what it does to the brain because it stimulates the same areas of the brain. And to meditate, you have to use a higher quality of your own essence. The same thing is true when you pray. Mm -hmm. How about the person that comes in and just wants you to fix them? Do they need to participate in that process? Oh, no, no. I, <laughs> I, I, I actually try to stay on the level of the person. As they come in and they say, my, my, my elbow hurts, we just, we just deal with the elbow. We get an x-ray of it. Uh, if, if it feels like there's a problem with it and I think that acupuncture would work, I would say, you know, you, it would be good to get stimulate your immunity and help your body to heal faster by some acupuncture or if it's a tendon problem or muscle problem that maybe someone could do a shiatsu or massage i send them out but if laser would help i would say try laser you know so so you're specifically focusing on whatever it is that the, yeah it's not that, about me it's about mm -hmm. the patient and mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the problems with our system is that we don't listen to the patient i, I don't no, not say we some of us do not listen to the patient mm -hmm. enough to actually hear what they're saying, which is all the clues that you need that point to where the problem originated 
and probably what's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where you you get to it. I have good ears. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, we are going to uh, come back and talk with you and, and Bonnie okay. and Blakely and talk more about the, uh, the whole integrative approach. But you've just had uh, so much going on in your teaching as well. You're yeah, I teach people how to, uh, actually it's the highest level of uh, Chinese medicine, the fifth level, but it's actually considered external medical Qigong. All right, well, we'll talk more about that. Okay. Dr. Ken Williams, you are watching in studio on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. And when we come back, we'll be discussing massage therapy with Blakely Parent. Stay right here. American Graduate is proud to recognize a champion for education. Our mission is to provide girls and young women an opportunity for a better future through education, counseling, training, and advocacy to enable them to become independent, empowered young women and productive members of our society. I didn't want to graduate. I was going to drop out. And then I came to Pace. Frequent discipline problems, uh, family issues that cost them to not be able to attend school regularly, so they had big gaps in their learning. I didn't used to like coming to school, but once I started coming to Pace, it really brought me out to love school. A lot of times we might be that student's confidence until she begins to see her successes and see that she really can accomplish everything that she's come here to do. But education is more than just the academics. It's being able to function in society and be successful there. And we see that with our girls and we love it. Now I'm being a leader instead of a follower. And I have people looking up to me to be the best person I can be. Pay Center for Girls is just a beautiful place to be because amazing things happen in the lives of the girls every day and we're here to celebrate it. Pace Center for Girls in Pensacola, a positive environment to help young women grow, achieve, and succeed. For more stories of champions, visit americangraduate.org. Well, this is in studio on WSRE, and we're talking about integrative health. Joining us now is licensed massage therapist Blakely Parent. Blakely has been in practice since 1999. He has completed over 30,000 massage sessions. Blakely has taught massage therapy at private and public schools as well as independently for about the past 12 years. He maintains his full-time practice also at Bay Bridge Chiropractic in Gulf Breeze. There you are at it. Welcome, Blakely. Thank you for having me. Glad that you're here. I want to talk about um, some of the benefits of massage therapy, and then I want to back up and talk about some of your training. But I want to just start out with um, the benefits of massage therapy. Well, first and foremost, massage therapy will increase circulation. So if you bump your elbow or, or, your, or any part of your body, your, your tendency is to grab it and rub it. And that is the body's own kind of innate wisdom to say, okay, bring some blood, bring some fresh nutrients. The, you know, in, in my view, the, the energy and the blood follow in the same way. And so if we bring all those there, we get healing. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the first benefit. Uh, the other one is uh, you, you get movement in the tissues to break up uh, any type of adhesion. So massage works on the soft tissues. Soft tissues, uh, when they get injured or if they get chronically used in, in an inappropriate way, a lot of times they'll stiffen up and then uh, somebody like me will have to go in there and kind of open up the um, ad adhered tissue. It adheres to itself. It may adhere to a part of a joint or a bone. And then I, you know, I'll go in there and, and give massage and hopefully restore range of motion and reduce the pain. What kinds of um, issues do people come in with that, that you work with? Uh, usually neck, back pain, uh, any kind of pain in the upper or lower extremities um, is, is what I'm usually working on. Uh, once in a while somebody will come in and, and I'll see that uh, a lot of their pain is coming from stress. So I'll assess their body in a way uh, to see how they're using it. And if uh, they're holding one shoulder chronically up 
onto the ear, then I'll work to get them aware of that so that they can begin to say, oh, it feels better when I'm like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of, I, I do like kind of a movement education with them. Uh, so a lot of times I'm, I'll look at them standing before I even start working on them on the massage table or on the massage mat. You can tell a lot about that. Yeah, there, it's, it's quite a field. Uh, I took a couple of years of study um, to address the body in that way. Uh, and I have a system that I've been using for you know a good 10 or 12 years to be able to analyze the body posturally and structurally. And what I see kind of governs what techniques I choose to use and how I, how I work with a given person. Let's talk about some of the different techniques that you do use. You've got a um, mat, you've got some yes. bars hanging out from the ceiling. <laughs> what are, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, yes, uh, I, I first learned to practice structural integration, which was what I was talking about before, where you read the body and you look at the posture and you kind of work to get symmetry. Uh, and then I also practice uh, Thai yoga massage, which is done on the floor, on a mat, with a client fully clothed. And I do a lot of pressing and moving around to the body into different yoga postures. And, uh, and it, it, it does uh, give a lot of the same benefits as table massage. It's just a different approach. Because I really try to use the Eastern approach and the Western approach together. Uh, to, to make my practice very integrative. When I was first starting out, I was, you know, I was rubbing and pressing and using a little bit too much brute force a lot of the times, and I'm like, something's missing here. And when I picked up Thai massage, I realized, wow, this is a way that I can work on the energetic body and affect change in the physical body. So over the years that I've studied uh, Thai massage, I've also studied Chinese massage as well, and uh, which is, is similar, but also a clothing on modality. So. Uh, you know, I might be stretching and, and pulling on a person's leg, uh, bringing it through range of motion, trying to find out where I need to work. To I've free heard them. it described Thai body massage almost as having yoga done to you. Yes, yeah. They also call it like the, the lazy man's yoga yeah, as well. well. And, and, you know, it's great because you get to lay there and do yoga for an hour, hour and a half, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, and you don't have to do anything. No I, just, effort. I get to do the yoga mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. And we've all heard about yoga's benefits. You've um, done a lot with that too. You want to kind of throw that in the mix? Uh, sure. You know, I, I did learn to teach yoga and did for a s small amount of time, but my experience with that, um, I was getting a lot of people in my class that needed to be on my massage table and I did not know what to do with them in that uh, paradigm, you know, so I, I was I was kind of stumped. I did have, a, a, you know, a few six-week beginner courses that I did teach uh, and, and now I'm an avid practitioner. I try to practice it every day or every other day. Um, I feel like it makes me a better therapist and it keeps me in shape to do what I do. I was going to say 30,000 massage yeah. sessions. You need to know a pretty good massage therapist yourself because yes, you probably yeah. need that as well. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I do what I love, and I've, ha I've, I've had jobs doing a lot of things that I didn't love. But when I found something that I loved, slowly I was just able to do more and more. After learning Chinese body work, I did learn Qigong. Uh, which changed my body mechanics in such a way as to teach me how to use the least amount of effort to get the most amount of benefit for the client. So I was able to pick up more sessions then and not have to suffer, you know, uh, injury or repetitive use. Now you have so. a lot of doctors that actually come to you for help. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. And, uh, uh, you know, I would say uh, stress is a big factor. Um, and I think, you know, uh, Doctors really do want uh, to have somebody to refer to because a lot of times they're like, you know, if I could, I can do this for them, but I can't do that for them. And, uh, you know, my good friend was telling me, you know, I can only get so far. Uh, so if I can refer them to you for a little while, then they could come back and we could do a reassessment. You know, maybe we could change and that person could get, uh, you know, a cure, affect a cure to help, you know. Um, because doctors are sometimes overwhelmed and they're like, well, I don't know what to do with this person, so I need to send them somewhere. So I think the awareness, you know, that somebody uh, with the right training, you know, could be able to take, you know, something with a little bit more uh, of a contraindication to be able to talk to a doctor and listen, you know, I think it's good. The training needs to be there mm -hmm. for that. Talking of training, um, lots of times I know you're in Thailand or you're in another part of the country with some master healer. What have you learned from those? You've got things all over the walls. Um, 
do you use just one at a time, or how does that work? In the beginning, uh, structural integration is a 12-session series, and in the beginning I did sessions 1 through 12 on every one for a little while. But then when I started to pick up the other modalities, I started to be able to work the rest, weave through the recipe and try and do what's appropriate. Uh, and, and learning the Eastern body work, structural integration to me is a Western modality. Uh, uh, Chinese massage or Tui Na uh, and Thai yoga massage are, are Eastern modalities. So I've been able to put them together in a way to kind of personalize the session for each client and get them the maximum benefit, you know. You know, over the years, um, people will hear, oh, you're going to get a massage, lucky you, yeah. that kind of thing. How, these days, you know, somebody will say to me, oh, you're going to get a massage, that kind of thing, and I say, no, I'm going to have therapy and it's going to help me function for the rest of the week. How have you seen attitudes around that type of thing change? Well, that, that um, that is a lot of my practice. A lot of people, you know, come for a massage so that they can go out and do what they want to do, and then, uh, you know, maybe they'll they'll the payoff will be a little bit too much, so they want to come get another massage and then go out. But they love what they do and they want to keep up their quality of life. Um, I think uh, I think people are kind of. Uh, uh, mystified when it comes to picking out a massage therapist because it's done in a lot of different uh, places and, and, it, and it's uh, offered in a lot of different scenarios. So I, I think, you know, I have a clinical practice, um, but I think in picking a massage therapist, you should find out uh, what they've trained uh, and, and how much they've practiced. Um, you know, meet them if possible beforehand and find out if they love what they do because I've known many, I've taught a lot of students and a lot of beginning students who just loved it from the start and were, were very good at it from the start and those people need practice so they need clients to work on. Um, and you know, a, a lot of my apprentices and students over the years, you know, I've watched them go from, you know, seeing three, four, five clients a week to seeing 20. So I'm really, you know, you know I, I can really see the practice is what makes perfect, you know, it's a practice. Right, so. and you touched on that just a little bit, but what a, a viewer that's watching right now, if they say, oh, you know, my shoulder's been bothering me, what are, what are the steps that they need to take um, when choosing, when looking, when researching, what are, what are the best ways to do that? Well, um, people usually have a profile of themselves online to look at. Uh, that would be the first thing. The second thing would be, you know, to call and, and make sure you get them on the phone and talk to them uh, and, and kind of use your intuition. Uh, be discerning. And if you don't like who you try out first, try out another one. And, because a lot of people will, will, will take a massage and it won't work. And then they'll be like, well, massage doesn't work. But what happened is maybe they went to somebody who, who hasn't developed any proficiency yet. Um, so they just think it doesn't work. So I, I think, you know, you, you really have to pick. Plus, you kind of resonate with your therapist, you know, so you get kind of a little intuitive bump in the heart area. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is who I need, you know, because this stuff is not as scientific, some of it is, mm -hmm. but I think you know a lot of it is, especially with any kind of therapeutic modality, you're gonna know who's gonna be able to help you within the first uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes. I imagine so. people can check with their primary physicians as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yes. Um, doctors are oftentimes happy to hear that a patient wants to take care of themselves in the way of receiving chiropractic, mm -hmm. massage therapy, or even acupuncture, because it makes their job a lot easier because a lot of times they are dealing with stuff that sometimes, you know, I just can't approach because it's not in my scope of practice. Um, you know, as we hear more and more in the news about painkillers being dialed back and it, doctors having their hands tied when it comes to people who truly have chronic issues, um, I imagine you'll be seeing more and more people. What do you say to that whole balance? Yes, I, I think I think pain me medication is needed for some people, but I think uh, massage could help them to use less if they absolutely have to have it prescribed by their doctor to lead their quality of life and make it as good as it can. I think uh, regular massage can oftentimes reduce that. And um, so just because someone is having massage doesn't mean that they necessarily can't take their medicine or no, vice versa? No, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that at all. In fact, uh, I, I like to talk to the physician if I was referred in by one, and if I have any question as to what I can or can't do, I'm on the phone with the doctor uh, asking them what, you know, what I can do, what would be good for me to do, and what I absolutely should not do. 
So it's a work together. Yeah, kind absolutely of integrative. Yeah, 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 always for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to talk and bring um, our other guests back in in just a minute to talk about how it all works together well. Thank you, Blakely. All right, thank you. Okay. You're watching in studio on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. We'll continue with tonight's topic, integrative health, right after this break. American Graduate is proud to recognize a champion for education. SkillsUSA is a national organization. It partners with business, industry, educators, and students because what we're trying to achieve is to have a skilled workforce. I'm going to school for heating and air conditioning with HVAC, which is where you learn how to work on air conditioners and refrigerators and walk-in coolers and anything to do with refrigeration. Skills USA promotes teamwork, leadership, citizenship, character development, and creates an environment that encourages students to complete their educations and plan a career path. Well, the most rewarding thing is to have students to be successful. Watching students start from um, in the beginning, coming here from either high school or another college, and uh, being successful within their program, finding that um, things were a little bit easier going through their program because they had Skills USA uh, to help them to be the best that they can be. So not only are you uh, becoming the best that you can be in your career field, but you're proving those skills in front of business and industry partners that are going to hire you for jobs in our future. Skills USA has helped me really step up my performance a lot more and be the best at my trade that I can be. Skills USA at Pensacola State College, helping students discover a world of possibilities. For more stories of champions, visit americangraduate.org. Our guests this evening, Bonnie McLean, Ken Williams, and Blakely Parent, experts in their healthcare fields, all interested in working together and uh, with the patients and clients integratively and holistically. Now we're bringing them all together for a joint discussion on what that means for you and for the future of healthcare in our community and in this country. Lots going on. I'm so glad to have brought all of you together because you all do different things, but you work together. Let's talk about the integrative approach. What do you think is the most uh, important thing to take away uh, from this evening's uh, conversation? I, I think that one of the most important things is that the patient is the most important uh, person in the healthcare aspect and that the provider of the healthcare should keep that in mind and evaluate what's best for the patient. And whether you're the best one for that or not, I think sending them to the right place actually is the really secret in making things work. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Blakely? I think, uh, you know, the, the patient or client needs to know that they have a choice. If, you know, if they just want to walk in and sit down in a chair and, and be massaged without, you know, removing any of their clothing or anything, that's why I went over to learn a lot of those Eastern modalities because they don't, they don't 
you, you use any you know oil massage mm -hmm. or anything like that um, in, in some of their mo more therapeutic modalities. So I like to know, I, I like the client to know that they have a choice that they can come in in loose comfortable clothing, lay down on a mat and have a yoga session. They can even lay down on the table and have you know a Chinese body work session. Always you know kind of integrating everything that I know into every session. But that yeah the choice is important. I think that is very important and with, with any physician or anybody you're going to, and again, listening to your intuition. Right. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, we've talked about, um, and, and Ken touched on this too, and Blakely does this all the time, so this doesn't apply to you, but <laughs> there's a lack of touch in today's um, medicine sometimes, but there's not enough time, it feels weird, mm -hmm. somebody thinks it's not appropriate, um, but in a medical care setting where you've um, checked into the practitioners, how important is it? I do think that we're missing that a lot. That would be my one thing when I've been a patient myself, um, not having the touch. We have high tech. I'd like to see high tech and high touch. And right now, the way it's happening is people are doing Western medicine, you know, for their acute problems, and then they come to people like us for touch. I would like to see more touch in our hospitals. You know, I, I, that's a really good point, and Blakely can probably back this up, but when I evaluate a patient, a lot of times the physicians have never touched where they hurt, and they are so amazed that I can go exactly to a, a, the exact spot so quickly, right? Where, right. where, where right. and they're going, that's it, how did you find it? <laughs> And that contact establishes a bond and a trust that helps in the healing process. They know that you know where it is now, you know, and, and you get to the point on an uh, energetic level, you actually can sense the type of tissue, whether it's tender, mm -hmm. bruised. Uh, sh it, it's very strange unless you've been doing it for a long time, but there's a certain um, fifth sense mm -hmm. yeah. that opens up inside of you that uh, allows you to evaluate that patient on a whole different level when you touch them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when I look at this group, I'm thinking there's like a hundred years worth of experience <laughs> at this <laughs> table. And we won't add my broadcasting <laughs> stuff in there either. We'll go way over the top. But that's, that's just incredible. And you've been doing it for such a long time that you can speak so credibly to it. What do you see in terms of our community of healers in this area, is everybody kind of working together, do you feel? I mean, you can never say everybody, but by and large. Well, first of all, I think that there is healing power in any community, and that's another thing. I think we as modern human beings are missing a lot. We don't have the small little farm towns anymore, the extended families. And so we're having to create our own extended family through community. And I know, at least from my um, experience, community has been my healer, and it is my healer with the people that I work with. So I can pass that on to my patients. We do, we do have healing communities in our uh, community of Pensacola and Gulf Breeze, but a lot of times they're invisible. When I first moved back about 18 years ago, I felt very alone. I didn't know that there were other people like me that were in the healing profession and so you know that that finding that in, in itself but they're, they're they're kind of invisible it's like we all know who each other is but I think that there's kind of an overload of information about where to go who to see what to do and I think we have to kind of create our own community in a way I thought that I to me community always meant you know I would go live someplace and like a Mm -hmm. commune or something yes. with other people and it's not like that at all I mean community on the internet even yeah. there you know. it's here Blakely we've talked about and um, just a possible like a virtual network because I could see a day where this area with its natural mm -hmm. beauty with its heritage tourism with all the culture and everything I could see a day where people would come here specifically to see healers such as yourselves you would refer to one another or is there talk of that I think uh, yeah uh, I've talked about that with several people and I think um, with the practitioners I think they should be open to networking you know if, if just in the massage therapy field, if, you're, mm -hmm. if your schedule's full and you can't get somebody in, make sure they get some mm -hmm. in to see somebody. You know, even if they end up coming back to you, make sure they get helped. 
you know, and I think that's the, the key. I actually, my first class that I taught in massage school was called networking, and it was teaching new massage therapists how to network instead of compete. And I think that, that I took all that to heart, and I think it's one of the big successes of my practice is yeah. being able to network, yeah. What do you think about that, Ken? I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got about two minutes. Is there anything that we've missed tonight that you want to make sure that I, our viewers know? I just know? want people to know that, and it's kind of been touched on a little bit, is that health care is just more than just the physical aspect of the body. And in Gulf Breeze, we do have a center where people can come to and learn about energy medicine and, and in such a way that they can do meditations. And we also have a feeding program, but it's, it's community-based. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called the Pranic Healing Center in Gulf Breeze, but it's it's just something that it is a a community where people that are looking for uh, alternative type things can come to. So it's here, it's here. It's just you just don't know that it's here. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of finding it. But when you start mm -hmm. seeing on the different networks that they're going out and they're looking into a massage class or they're looking into a meditation is the big thing the networks are talking about, like it's something new. When you start seeing that happening, you feel like it's going to become more mm -hmm. widespread. What do you see as the future of, um, of all of these different modalities working together? I, I think, see it happening. Uh, yeah, I can see it happen. I, I, th I think it's going to take. Um, I think it's going to take getting the the patients involved mm -hmm. as well as the practitioners, because the practitioners can get together and we can exchange stories and we can talk and we can meditate together and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think that that is just one part of the community. I think the patients need to be involved too. That way, maybe some of them can find, you know, find maybe they'd like to be healers as well. So, works uh, works yeah. well for everybody yeah. and I love the community and the fact of the networking and all mm -hmm. of the different thing that's going on. I want to thank each of you for all thank the you. good thank that you. you do for everyone else and, and I just hope that more and more people will realize that they kind of need to take their health care into their own hands and find the, the best people for them. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes. definitely. Thank, thank you, you for taking time out thank of your practices to come and speak with us this evening. We want to say special thanks once again to our guests this evening, Integrative Healthcare Practitioners, Bonnie McLean, Dr. Kenneth Williams, and Blakely Parent. In conclusion, it's known that inside of you is an intelligent, energetic system that maintains health and balance. So if you or someone you know is out of balance and experiencing pain or illness, or you just want to keep your healthy body in optimal condition, it's widely accepted these days that the best approach is an integrative one. I'm Sherry Hemminghouse Weeks. I truly hope that you've enjoyed and will take away something from our broadcast this evening. Join us again next time in studio or right in your own backyard. <laughs>